news um anti joshua lost against um aj ruiz the other day like a very 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 surprising upset uh something i don't think anyone had any idea was going to happen i think the odds on this actually happening were you know ridiculous how high the odds were anti ruiz coming into this and i think what makes this story really really interesting is i guess it speaks for um life in general right the idea of always being prepared the idea of never underestimating your opponent never taking for granted opportunities you get given um always trying to do the best with what you have blah 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 right i think this speaks to it because again i'm speaking to this i'm speaking about this like not i'm not i'm not like a boxing expert right i'm coming into just as like a fan of fighting and i saw the i saw the press conferences beforehand i saw how um some of the fans or some of the pundits were treating AJ Ruiz, I saw how calm and nonchalant um, Andy Joshua was, right? He was taking things very easily, very lightly. He didn't think he would be much of a test. And something about it kind of irked me. I didn't really think it was respectful of AJ Ruiz. I think maybe he took it for granted. And I think maybe AJ Ruiz is, um, you know, laid back the mule, the fact that he looks the way he looks and the fact that he wasn't really, you know, there was, enough, there was nothing personal in this fight. There wasn't like, um, they had some ill will or some bad feelings towards each other it was just two fighters fighting in a ring because in in effect um joshua was meant to fight big baby miller right and um, miller obviously got popped for um pd pds before the fight and ruiz kind of stepped up when no one else would and took the fight right so a lot of people wouldn't have taken the fight because they wouldn't want to be allowed to slaughter without a full training camp but i think i read recently that ruiz had just come off a big win i think four weeks prior so he was already quite in fighting shape i think he won that that fight in the, maybe the fourth or seventh round too. Um, so maybe he didn't take that much damage and he felt like, you know, he was, he was kind of springing his step. And I've, and I've seen a lot of fighters say, if you win a get, if you win a box, obviously, if you win a fight, it's different. If you lose, probably not, there's not, not the right time to have a rematch. Not, not the right time to have another a fight. But I've heard a lot of fighters say, if you win, especially via knockout or via TKO and you, the adrenaline is still running, you could fight literally again the next, on the same night and probably win again. So the fact that he stepped up was probably an indication of how confident he felt in his ability because he was like, you know, the, the energy and the diffusion was surging through his body, especially coming off the back of a big win. But facing someone like an anti Joshua wasn't, you know, again, for him wasn't an easy an easy um challenge to accept because, you know, effectively if Anti Joshua did what he what he should have done, he would have destroyed him in a few rounds and, you know, Ruiz would have come out of it, yes, with a big payday, but also feeling a little bit embarrassed, right? Having not really kind of given his Give his best effort forward, not no full training camp, blah 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 blah. But as it turns out, Ruiz ends up um, shocking the world and knocking uh, or or you know or finishing um, Anthony Joshua with a TKO um, in the seventh round. I think they knock each other down. To, no, uh, he knocks him. He knocks Anthony Joshua down twice in the third. No, twice in the third. No, once in the third. I don't know. Is it three times? Maybe three times. I don't know. He knocks him down a few times. And it finishes off in the seventh round. And yeah, a shocking, shocking turn of events. But like I said. <laughs> A really clear indication on just how important it is to never take your opponent for granted, never take your chances for granted, and always, always trying to put your best foot forward. And I think what it speaks for for me in my career, or the things that I'm doing, it speaks on the idea that, you know, you have a small window in life, right, to kind of really irk out the most of your opportunities you're given, right? We're not on this earth for a long time. Opportunities are not, you know, they're not unlimited they come your way in small doses and you really have to take advantage of them whilst they're in front of you because you never know when they're going to come back around again i think in terms of aj ruiz's case he took advantage of the opportunity to kind of come in and shock the world win some belts write his name into history if he goes on to then losing a rematch getting severely knocked out or getting palmed by somebody else in between that because i think there's a rematch clause automatically triggered in these in these contracts when they sign them before the fight so so if if joshua loses that he can automatically go and re um try to fight this guy again if this happens fair enough but he's already written his name into the history books and i guess for joshua what it goes to show is that, you know, with boxing being the way it is, where they always are avoiding each other, you know, which is not, which is something that a lot of fans have been annoyed by. We don't really get to see the fights we want to see because promoters kind of, you know, stick their noses in. Fighters sometimes get a little bit aspirational and try to think of, their, start charting their career of finishing their career off with a, with a zero in the same way Mayweather did, kind of engineering your wins and making sure you only fight a people of a certain caliber and kind of pad your record. I think because of this, what ends up happening is that we are living in an age where I think people's appetite for fights and for content in general is so feverish, right? People are binging on Netflix shows. People are, you know, um, 
leaking episodes of Game of Thrones ahead of time so you can watch it, you know, back to back. There are all these things happening that are really showing people's first for fights or fights first for content in the immediacy is really high. So I don't think you can get away with doing what you did in the past. So I think because of that, loads of little signals are going to get thrown out in the universe, right? Stuff like this with, AJ, with the AJ Ruiz, where Eddie Hearn, for the most part, was trying to maneuver um, Joshua's career in a way where he wouldn't have to fight either Fury or Wilder until the very, very end, right? Maybe until Wilder progressed in years a little bit more or his power started to diminish, maybe when Fury started to come, become a little bit more disinterested in boxing or maybe when he, you know, decides to fade away, that's when Joshua will finally get those fights. And I guess what this shows now is that you can't do that because effectively what this fight has done is probably hurt Joshua more that he lost to Ruiz than it would have done if he lost to Wilder or Fury, I would say, in my experience, because Wilder and Fury... Uh, again, rated as the top two heavyweights in the division. Maybe they're all joint first or joint first and second. I don't know where, how you're going to group them. But if Joshua would have lost to Wilder or Fury, that's, there's no shame in that because his, his automatic bounce back fight would have been either one. So if if he would have lost to Joshua, I mean, if Joshua would have lost to Wilder, he could have easily come back around and fought Fury, right? Or fought Ortiz and then fought Fury and then fought um, Wilder again. But with this fight... Yes, he's going to get triggered with a Ruiz automatic rematch, but it, it essentially puts the Joshua Wilder of Fury fight out in the dust because he doesn't have any bargaining chips to come in and negotiate with, right? I think Wilder has already confirmed that he's going to fight Ortiz again for a second time. If he get, is able to get through Ortiz, he'll then go and have a rematch with Fury. And essentially, they're going to be competing in and amongst each other with Joshua still on the outside periphery looking looking on in which again is uh, is kind of painful considering just how much he kind of wants to write his name into the boxing uh, halls of fame or the boxing you know history books but another thing that could happen is that this could also signal the change in the attitude towards um perfect records in boxing which i've always thought is a little bit of a silly thing to uh, purport or to like claim as any sort of you know superiority over other fighters i think the fact that promoters are mostly in, involved in how fights are scheduled or how fights are put together having a zero record or having an undefeated record doesn't really prove anything or it just proves that you have a better you know a promotion team around you than the other guy maybe has right well he maybe has to take fights on because he has to take as many fights as he can that come his way to earn a living or to build up his profile if you're a boxer that has a good team behind you you have sky backing you you have all these other sponsors under armor you could potentially come you know you potentially be a little bit more strategic in how you approach things but I'm hoping this Joshua loss can maybe signal a change in people's attitudes towards it. Fighters' attitudes more so, because I think fighters are the ones that are bothered a lot about the fact that to be undefeated. But I think for the most part, fans don't care, right? Joshua beat Joshua got got felled. Yeah, he lost this fight against AJ Ruiz. But, you know, he's the epitome of the perfect specimen, right? Ripped, tall, powerful, good uh good speaker, good on camera, uh speaks well, sorry, is uh good on tv good on video this is the epitome of a comeback story right there i'm probably sure there's people in the audience who hate um Andrew joshua and think that you know he's a little bit too perfect he's a little bit too polished and probably wanted to see him kind of knocked off his perch this is the perfect redemption story right he falls down and now he's an opportunity to get back up again so i think it could less it could um definitely change the way people's view um the way people view boxing and how records are kind of held especially because considering in the third round he knocked him down once Right, got too confident, rushed back in again, and again, um, as you've seen in the most fights, when you knock someone down and rush back in again, you're always sensible for a knockdown yourself. And I think in the exchanges, what we saw was that I think we saw it a little bit as well in the Vladimir Kitchen fight. His hands aren't that powerful, are they? Like he, he's not as a heavy, he's not as hard hit as a you want for a heavyweight. And we know now, looking at it, if you would have fought, and if if Joshua, if Joshua would have fought Anthony Wilder. There's no way he would have. Did you tell Sorry, there's no way he would have won. He would have definitely got knocked out, hundred million percent. We know that for a fact. Uh, while there were those massive helicopter wheelhouse punches, would have definitely kicked him over the head and kind of sent him into, you know, Wobble Street. But again, like I said, the redemption story is more, a lot more interesting. I'm eager to see how Joshua bounces back from this. Um, again, I'm, I'm I'm eager to see how he handles Eddie Hearn because I think there was a little scuffle about that. I think if you guys saw the video, there's a video of Ruiz's team talking to Sky Sports News. And then from the, in the background, you can see um, Anthony Joshua's dad uh, shouting at Eddie Hearn. And then um, you can see it, you can see Joshua mouthing, look, it's me, it's me. Like, don't, don't, don't shout him, it's me, it's me. I think maybe if he just was dad is probably telling him, look, see, I told you not to fix his fights or to kind of get him fighting his bums and now look what's happened. Um, 
So yeah, hopefully this kind of comes back again. But again, a crash to Ruiz. What a fucking amazing story to come in the way he did, look the way he does, considering who he was fighting, like body wise, composition wise. But again, as we see in boxing, man, punches chance. That spirit, that heart is probably the main thing that kind of gets you forward in boxing. Not necessarily what you look like or how you're probably built in the most part. So yeah, congratulations to Ruiz and his team. What an amazing victory. Um, again, amazing, 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 amazing story going forward. Uh,